For me personally, um, I'm a strong more LGBT school role model and a diversity role model, and I speak independently. And in the last couple of weeks, though, I've been caught up in the Parkville protests. I've actually gone out and met some of the, uh, the teachers, and I've had curry with some of the protesters. And I think for my own self-care and sanity, I kind of, I've been so busy with media requests and my own full-time job as well, and my partner as well, that it's like, I, I'm thinking, where do I get time for myself? And I am very angry inside. In fact, I'm hurting a lot inside. Um, so I have to find ways to channel that anger in a way that's positive and is helpful to not only me, but to the community as well. Um, so I write my feelings down. I use Facebook, social media as a good tool to express. Um, yeah, so for me, it's just kind of like, maybe the anger isn't there, but on the surface, but I am hurting inside, and I'm very much angry, and yeah, I do want to cry, because when I see the children in particular uh, at the school gates, on Monday, I was at Anderson Park Road, <coughs> children are there, ice cream was there, they're running around, they're being forced by the parents to hold the placards up, God knows what you understand it or not. Um, I just think of like when I was a child and over the weekend, I put out a tweet to say, at what age did you know that you were different? Just a simple tweet. Because I know that for me, it was age three or four. I couldn't put a word to it, but I knew. And the response was fantastic. And most people responded that they were aged between four and 14, um, which kind of correlates with what's going on in the primary schools right now. So when I see these kids, it brings it all back to me. You know, the whole sort of the bullying, the taunts, the sort of the teasing, every single thing. So constantly on the media, and I'm watching the school kids, and I'm thinking, somebody in that little group is gonna come out, identify as LGBT. Well, they're not necessarily gonna come out, because there's so much oppression from religion and the mis misinterpretations of religion that they're pushing us and when I say us, I mean the whole LGBT community, whether you're BAME or not, pushing us back into the closet. And I personally do not want to go back into that closet because my mental health was affected terribly. I attempted or contemplated suicide back then. Um, so I'm hoping that the next generation can break through it. I'm hoping that the kids outside these schools can break through it so that in 20 years time, it's not an issue of being LGBT and, oh my God, what is it that I'm gonna think of? Gosh, literally. It's a case of like, yeah, LGBT, so what? Give me a hug, please. <laughs> so that's what I have to do. <laughs> So anyway, I'm just mindful of the time. We've got two minutes. Any more comments or questions? Yeah, people having a good same question. Yeah, um, I don't think anger is a useful information. Uh, there's many layers in me that I could be angry about. So I could be angry at the multiple loss that I've faced of friends of the left lived with HIV. I think I turn that outwards and I do quite a lot of work within the community to formulate change. And that's where it's been useful to place my anger. There's no point on a daily basis looking in the mirror and thinking about what am I angry with and why I'm angry. It's more about what can I do to try and change that. Yeah, sometimes I feel angry. Mostly I feel really sad. Or touched. But I find that anger closes down discussions and doesn't really help people to express what they view. So I tend to not, well, I tend to try not to be angry.